The 5G market may still be in its infancy, but Uridu Qatar has been offering 5G services for several years already and has been pushing the boundaries of what next generation mobile broadband networks can achieve. To find out more, I'm talking today with Gunter Uttendorfer, CTIO at Uridu Qatar, but also known to many in the industry for his time at Sprint, Telecom Austria, Optus and T-Mobile Europe. Uh, Gunter, thanks for joining us today. Uh, can you just tell us about your role at Uridu Qatar? Uh, hello, Ray. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks for having me. Yes. Um, so, you, you know, uh, I worked uh, in Kansas City for Sprint and uh, then I rejoined my family in Vienna and Austria. And I was um, initially not sure whether this would be a, a good uh, development for me. But then I visited Doha and Qatar. And um, I spent my first evening here in the central market called Sukwa Kif. And I saw in Sukwa Kif how many people are coming there together, how diverse uh, the people are. And I thought this is a good place. And uh, this is a place where I can definitely live and work. And um, this uh, positive um, impression uh, was also uh, with uh, the, the challenges in the company. Odido Qatar wanted to do a, a big network modernization, a big IT modernization, wanted to do a digital transformation, wanted uh, to continue with their role as a 5G pioneer. And that all interested me. And then the icing on the cake was uh, that there was the World Cup coming in 2022. And I thought this is a great set of challenges. And that's why I, I wanted to be here and uh, do this work uh, on the infrastructure in network and IT and drive these transformations and be part of that journey with the team here. So where is Uridu Qatar on its 5G journey? Uh, it was early to the party, wasn't it? Uridu Qatar pioneered uh, 5G with first trials in 2016 and then was uh, in early 2018 one of the first countries in the world to launch 5G commercially. And since then we haven't stopped. We we have this uh, pioneering role um, in several uh, important developments in 5G. We used, uh, after the launch, uh, to build out the initial network. And then um, in 2019, uh, we had a year of showcases. We used the Emir Cup, which is a very important soccer event here in Qatar, uh, to showcase uh, 5G use in uh, e-health and in um, entertainment. We had a 5G connected ambulance and we had a 5G virtual stadium that broadcasted from the actual stadium to the biggest mall here, the Mall of Qatar, and gave visitors of the Mall of Qatar the possibility to see that. In 2020, we continued and we were one of the first operators in the world that deployed uh, dynamic spectrum sharing, giving us uh, the opportunity, while we still have a lot of 4G uh, customers using 4G devices to use 4G and 5G on the spectrum band in parallel. And then in the middle of the year 2020, we showcased uh, together with our partner Ericsson uh, with 200 megahertz of 3.5 spectrum speeds of more than four gigabits per second in a cell. So this is a lot of technology innovation that we brought to the market. And um, we, we think that our journey will um, accelerate now that with the uh, 5G capable iPhones and other devices from Samsung, Nokia and other vendors, there's a lot of devices now on the market and uh, we are getting ready to support these devices and we are getting ready uh, to support them, especially uh, with uh, the outlook on the World Cup in 2022. So that's a, a great progression with 5G so far. Uh, what has been the customer reaction to 5G service availability? How has 5G impacted user experience? Well, uh, I think the customer reaction has been really uh, fantastic. We have seen a good uptake of uh, 5G users and especially then with the launch of the devices last year. So for me, in our strategy, it was clear 2018 was the year of the launch, 2019 a year of showcases. And then in 2020, it's the year of 
mass deployment of devices. And we saw great devices coming out from many suppliers, Samsung, and then we saw the iPhone launch, the iPhone 12 with 5G. It's very well accepted by our customers and hundreds of thousands of customers are now using uh, 5G on our network. And they are getting great performance there. So what we have seen is it has significantly improved the average speeds on our network so much that at the end of the last year, in several benchmarks, we have been number one in the world with uh, average speeds on the global mobile speed uh, of more than 170 megabits per second in Qatar. And uh, the, it's not only the speed, it was also the lower latency that customers enjoy. You know, with the switch from 4G to 5G, many customers uh, can uh, have a decrease of latency by a factor two or three, which of course is great for real-time applications, which is great for gaming. So we have seen customers using our 5G network a lot which has also to do with uh, how widespread it is. Our 5G network covers now more than 90% of the populated area in Qatar, and customers can use it in their daily lives uh, basically nearly everywhere. And we are continuing to roll out our 5G network, uh, which will add to this world of opportunities and possibilities our customers have with 5G. Uh, how did Urdu Qatar approach its 5G rollout? Uh, have you deployed a lot of small cells? Uh, has the rollout included in-building coverage as well as macro cells? Yes, uh, all of them. So the, the way we approached it, we started from uh, Doha, the capital, and we started in uh, hotspots or hot zones of uh, customer usage, which is like West Bay, the Pearl, uh, the cultural city, Katara. And then we extended to the airport. And then we have extended it in the south to the city of al Wakra and in the north to the city of al Khor. And uh, then we went to the rural areas. So this is the way we rolled out the network. And as I mentioned, uh, beginning of 2020, we also added the capability of dynamic spectrum sharing, which further brought coverage uh, to Qatar, 5G coverage that customers can now use with their devices. So, Gunter, what technical innovations have helped Urdu Qatar with its 5G strategy? Very good question. So, I think uh, there were a lot of technical innovations that we needed to make this 5G rollout really uh, such a success. One was on the core side, uh, a cloud core that can handle and bring all this capacity. Uh, on the radio side, it was, uh, amongst other things, the use of 5G massive MIMO technology, which helps us to give 5G cells a lot of capacity and via beamforming, great quality, especially also on the cell edge. We also uh, had uh, a network modernization that uh, modernized our radio network, the 4G network, that helped us uh, to, to give customers very good performance 4G and 5G wise. We did also modernize the transport network and we introduced their uh, segment routing to uh, reduce latency times and uh, keep the transport times really low. Then uh, I think an important innovation is dynamic spectrum sharing because it allows us to have an economical use of spectrum as long as we have a small number of 5G customers. Uh, we, and as these customers grow, more spectrum gets dedicated for 5G, but in the meantime, we can still use it for 4G. We also did a lot of early engagements with uh, device manufacturers to ensure full compatibility for new technologies and functionalities in 5G. And we were deploying advanced features like TDD, FDD carry aggregation to achieve higher performance for our customers. So a lot of technology innovations that came in a bundle to make this uh, 5G, uh, 5G rollout a really great success for our customers. Okay, that, that, that's a really broad set uh, of technology innovations there. Uh, but what innovations would you like to see next that can help you achieve your next set of goals? So I think there is again a wide range of innovations uh, across uh, all sorts of things that are needed for a mobile network. So on the one hand, uh, we would like to see smart poles better camouflaged uh, pole solutions that can help us uh, to make the deployment easier. Uh, we also think that there is a lot of potential 
in uh, the transport network still, um, then we believe that uh, millimetric wave will come and these technologies will have a big impact, especially for high capacity areas uh, and high capacity events. So we are looking forward into that. Uh, we believe also that uh, 5G standalone will be a technology that helps us to decrease latency times and to decrease the complexity in the network. So that will help us to serve consumer customers, but especially corporate customers better. And uh, we think um, Cloud Run will help us, especially in so-called hot zone areas, where you have an area where for a time there's really high load to balance that load better between the cells. So there's a lot of exciting technologies there. We are looking with passion into them. And when we think that they are mature, we will have, uh, with great energy, push them into our network. So finally, Gunther, what are the major trends you expect to see in the next few years that will impact your network and services potential? Well, uh, here in Qatar, there is a national vision 2030 that wants to push uh, developments, for example, in the areas of health, education, science. And um, I think that will have an influence. There is smart cities like Lucille that will require a lot of new services. Many of them will be based on our 5G network. So I think that will uh, drive us uh, to develop together with a lot of partners solutions that can be used uh, for uh, things like smart partnering, uh, smart metering, uh, smart education. Uh, there is um, also, uh, as I said, on the consumer side, uh, this development happening around augmented and virtual reality. There is, we have seen a big interest in uh, the trial I mentioned uh, with uh, the virtual stadium in uh, the malls. So I expect that uh, a lot of entertainment content will come to customers in a lot more diverse and enriched ways. And uh, that I think uh, is something that uh, we certainly would like to enable and to foster that. I also believe uh, that uh, when I look at applications like um, uh, TikTok or other video applications, there will be a lot of enriched content around uh, enriched voice services. And that's something that we still have here a lot. Uh, you know. I think in this region in the Middle East, in Qatar, people are still using their phone for a lot of calls and they would like uh, to, to enrich that. And I think uh, there will be also a set of um, possibilities coming in the future with 5G, with the low latency. And the last point probably is the tactile internet. You know, uh, the internet has been um, as good as the reaction times. And we know that for audio, for um, a uh, human being uh, to to perceive it without any interruption or delays, the border is around 100 milliseconds. For video, the border is much lower. It's around 10 milliseconds. And with uh, the, the ping times, with the latency that we get from 5G, this will open up a lot of uh, opportunities uh, for the internet to become more tactile. And that's certainly something we are looking forward to uh, with a lot of uh, curiosity and energy. Well, it sounds like you have the, the network and capabilities to be trying all of the new applications that, that are coming out of the developers uh, and, and advancing the 5G market. Uh, Gunter, great to talk to you today. Great to see what's going on uh, in Qatar and look forward to talking with you in the future to find out how things are progressing. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. And as we say here, Yala Qatar. Yellow 5G. Uh, we are looking forward to, uh, to the future. Thank you so much for having me.